Today's Nephril story will focus on the Golden Age through the Shadow Age. Our next chapter in Nephril will focus on the fall and the incidents that led up to it. The Golden Age of Nephril started with the birth of Jeriah Kronos in the year 1652, later to be known as Chronomancer. At this point in time, Nephril was at the height of its power. New enclaves started flying into the sky every year, and following Yolam's example, each enclave had its own set of laws, rules and culture. A trend emerged among the enclaves. They soon became staging grounds for social and magical experiments. Enclaves that specialised on nature, others on necromancy, some were focused on providing food, while others again were being focused on military use. Low versus High Nephril now became an even bigger divide. Living in High Nephril means having access to the latest magical innovations, seldom having to worry about food, crime or even entertainment. Low Nephril, on the other hand, suffered from a drain of resources and manpower. The split caused a new group of dissidents to rise in Lower Nephril. Political movements that didn't want to learn magic, and praised those who didn't have magical aptitude. These groups would work with non-magical creatures outside and inside the borders of Nephril and would support revolts and illegal activities. This movement turned into a terrorist group when they broke into Yolam's vault, killed the guard and stole 24 parts of the Nether Scrolls. With no use for magic, these thieves destroyed the Golden Scrolls to the horror of all of High Nephril. This act caused a wound between High and Low Nephril, a wound that would continue to blister to the very end. Chronomancer was a frontrunner trying to heal these wounds, often working towards mending relationships with other civilizations in Faerun. He risked his own life when orcs attacked the human outposts of Luskan. Chronomancer saved the city, but he fell victim to a grievous wound that would end up killing him eight years later. Chronomancer could have been cured, and lived, but to understand why he died we need to understand a bit about how Arcanists viewed gods and the clerics. To an Arcanist, gods were but powerful magical artisans. They saw the spells that clerics had and knew it as part of the same fabric of magic that they themselves worked. They also understood that spells cast by clerics were granted by the gods, an act that they saw being analogous to creating magical items. While true, they couldn't grant spells to sentient beings, they could cast spells into items and have those cast spells at a later stage. This was a combination with the idea that aging was a curse placed upon Nephro by the gods so that they could not rival them in power. With this mindset and constant innovation in the magic in Nethro, they saw it only as a matter of time until Arcanists could mimic the divine. Submitting yourself to healing from a cleric required that the Arcanist admit that his magic was not powerful enough to save him, and he too was submissive to the gods, an act that most Arcanists would rather die than do. In the year 2202, the first enclave fell. A failed experiment on the enclave Maonator caused the entire enclave to fall. We suspect that a spell tied to the Enclave's Mythfaller went wrong. This caused a critical failure, further leading down to an explosion that was seen across the entire empire. This event fueled the anti-magic movement of Lower Nephro even more. The Golden Age is often claimed to last until 3163, when the Shadow Age officially starts. But some scholars agree that there exists one between these two, the Age of Discovery. The Age of Discovery is a disputed age, as there is no defining arcanist to date it, but rather a gem known as Charladins, first founded in 2654. These gems had the ability to store spells that were cast into them, and this discovery caused a frenzied expansion in Nephro. Now, arcanists could arm soldiers and explorers with spells without leaving the rank club, or even the requirements of a mythfaller. This allowed a specific type of expansion. High Nephril started exploring realm space and even built some spelljammer ships. They also started walking the plains. However, both of these expansions were deemed too dangerous and not cost effective. They were quickly shut down. In addition to this, some Nephril's outposts were created to expand the magical knowledge. Deep Nephril was created in the Sea of Fallen Stars, where three underwater enclaves were created, and Sargoth Enclave, near the future city of Waterdeep, was created to study elven mantle magic. In 3163, the greatest arcanist ever to walk the face of Faerun was born, and with his birth, the Shadow Age started. Karsus Karsus did his first spell at the age of two. He found himself learning magic inherently. 
clerics of Mistral saw him as some sort of prophet sent by the goddess and they tried to indoctrinate him into the church from a very early age. However, Carsus was a true arcanist and adopted the mindset that gods are but powerful magic users, throwing away the temple teachings. At the age of 22, Carsus was the youngest wizard ever to create a mytholler and raised an enclave, a feat that very seldom was done before wizards had their first grey hairs. Carsus also made the most impressive enclave in Nefro, Elinar. It was the only enclave with two mythollers, so that it could be twice the size of any other. He also hired architects to craft a city that would defy gravity and physics. Portals, teleportation platforms, anti-gravity were all part of the city's architecture, and soon it became the premium enclave for colleges and universities across Nefro. It is now we enter the time of the fall, where we learn about Karsus in more detail, the Feyrim and the treacherous Olostin. More on that next time.